Well, friends, welcome to another episode of Blossoms and Bourbon. My name is Mark. I'm the owner here at Creative Occasions, and it's a pleasure to welcome you to my workroom. Um, and if you haven't already and you've been enjoying these videos, I hope that you will like and subscribe to them. Be sure and hit that little bell icon so that you'll be notified when we do new videos. Uh, it really is helpful to us, and I appreciate that so much. Um, we've done a corsage um, episode where we showed how to make a cuff corsage and kind of segue to that and at the request of two of my biggest fans and friends, uh, not necessarily in that order, Lisa and Maria, we're going to do a boutonniere. Um, and the boutonniere tonight is a little bit different. If you can see on this uh, very quiet model behind me, uh, this is Jason, you guys. <laughs> Finally, you've wanted to see Jason. Here he is. The, the, all the rage right now for boutonnieres for men is we kind of moved away from a single flower on the lapel, but are more doing what is called a pocket boutonniere. Uh, let me just grab this one real quick. Uh, I'll show you what it kind of, how it's made. Um, it literally is kind of designed to sort of take the place of a pocket square uh, in the pocket, front breast pocket of your jacket. Um, it's made on cardboard or something that's a little more rigid. It's covered so it's a little more decorative and then flowers are glued across the top. So then when you slide it into place, um, it just kind of sits nice and neat in your pocket there. Um, it eliminates, you know, the worry about getting stuck with a pin and some of that kind of stuff, which happens with a traditional boutonniere. Um, and like most things, you know, I'm sure that this will go through phases and we'll see a change in this too. But for now, uh, this is the new trend. So we're going to, we're going to show you how that goes together. Starting with just a piece of basic cardboard. Um, this is roughly three inches by five inches. So index card size. I would not use an index card uh, because I don't think that that's quite sturdy enough. I think you need something that's a little more rigid uh, to glue to. And then I just used a, uh, an adhesive strip from Oasis to adhere some ribbon. And we're going to just basically cover the cardboard with ribbon. Um, what I'm doing, and the, the color in, in this case that I chose is black. I did that because it's going to blend into the jacket. Um, if you know the color of the jacket that this is being worn with, um, I would suggest using something similar to that. So if you do have a little bit of an edge peeking up above uh, where the, the pocket is, it's going to blend right in and you're not going to notice it at all. So uh, we're just going to pretty quickly get through this, hold that in place. We'll come over, give this a little trim. Use a couple of sticky dots to hold the end in place here. This really doesn't have to be perfection. I mean, this really is just kind of the base for what we're going to make the boutonniere out of. Uh, so you just want to be sure that it's nice and secure and that the ribbon doesn't come undone while you're working on it or while uh, the gentleman is wearing it. Okay. So basically we just got the cardboard covered. I haven't um, worried too much about the ends. One of the ends is going to be down inside the pocket. The other end is going to be covered with flowers. So we're not going to worry too much about that. All right. Um, you know, just like in the um, cuff corsage, uh, it's important to build layers of material up as you're building these corsages. Um, that's what makes the glue work. That's what makes it adhere well is when there are layers and textures of things for it to hold on to. I thought for this it might be kind of fun to use some bullion wire. Um, this is a wire that you've seen me use before. It's from the Smithers Oasis company. And basically I'm using this very highly trained and skilled technique to just unspool some wire and we're just going to twist it on itself bunch it up, make like a little textural sculpture as it were, I guess. Beauty of the bullion is that it's thin enough that you can just break it. You don't have to have scissors to cut it. Um, so yeah, we're going to get that enough so that it can go across the top. And that's going to be sort of our base layer, the foundation of those layers of texture and the surface material that we glue to. Now the materials I've picked to use in this 
boutonniere are much like the ones that are in the sample that's back there. I've got these little tiny baby orchids. I just, I, first of all, I love those so much as a flower because they're a little more unusual. They're very lightweight, which is also helpful in this application. Um, this little plant came from the grocery store, so you can find them pretty readily uh, in a color that would work. Uh, they also come in solid white, so you can find them that way too. And uh, then we're also gonna be using some stock florets. We're gonna be using a Gerber daisy some limonium, and some green trick dianthus uh, for a little more texture and um, again, to help create those layers. All right, so to get this wire on there, we're gonna just take the hot glue gun, run this right across. And without burning yourself too much, Just want that to adhere to the ribbon. And you can play with the little whirls and the little, you know, loops and all that kind of stuff later as you go along. But for now, we just need to get that kind of basic uh, application in place there. Oasis cold glue is gonna be the primary mechanic that holds all this together. I like to just get a little dab out on a piece of paper and work from the piece of paper uh, prior to actually um, putting a lot of glue in this. I'm just going to take some leaves We're going to attach those. You do want to keep in mind as you're attaching the floral products on this that um, it's going to be sticking up out of a pocket. So you want to keep that in mind. It doesn't need to be too, uh, what's the word I want? Have too much volume, I guess. Um, lots of men are a little more self-conscious about wearing flowers. And this definitely has more floral material in it than a regular boutonniere. So I do think that depending on the client, depending on who's wearing it, um, it might be important to kind of take that into account and you know, maybe not make it have quite so much volume. All right, the fuzziness of this green trick is perfect for this. I'm just gonna put a few little dabs of that in there. This glue is really, really effective if you have the time. Um, to let the glue get a little bit tacky before you put it into its kind of final spot. So let's do that, for example, with the orchid. Let's just pop one of these off. Just gonna get some or glue on the back of that orchid. So there's just a little bit of a layer there. You can be kind of generous with the glue because you do want it to hold well. And then I'm just gonna let it sit there. Take another one, we'll do the same thing. and let it sit there. And that's gonna get kind of nice and tacky while we're working. Um, I love using stock. And one of the benefits of stock is that it does hold well, but you need to make sure that the stock that you're using is nice and fresh. This piece, beautifully fresh. This piece is not, starting not to be. And you know, to the casual observer, you might not be able to tell much difference, but if you look at the back of this stem, You'll notice that it's starting to get a little mushy and a little slimy. That's the sign that the stock is getting a little bit past its prime. So for sure, you would not be wanting to use this floret in the work on the corsage or the, the boutonniere in this case, uh, because it's not gonna hold up as well. So I always go for some of the florets that are open, but not the lower ones, so that you have there's a little more opening left for them to be doing. And the longevity of that bloom is going to work a little bit better. And again, just kind of pulling that back so you get the stem in there. Get a nice amount of glue on it. I'm going to go right in between where those little pieces of the trick dianthus are. 
So you can see how that's going. You can't even see the trick dianthus at this point, and that's totally fine uh, because it's simply acting as the mechanic. It's acting as a way that all this is holding together. Um, let's go ahead and do one more in the center. As much as I hate to be too symmetrical about it. All right. These guys are probably ready. So I just kind of nestle that down into those layers of stock. You can probably see that from the camera above me. I'll turn it around for you to see it too. So it's just kind of tucked in there. Nice and secure. It's not going to go anywhere with that glue, trust me. And these little blooms are just so sturdy. They hold up very well. All right. Now, I mentioned we were going to use the Gerber, but we're not going to use the Gerber as it is because you can see that if we tried to do that, it would be too, way too big. So what we're going to do is we're going to take petals off the Gerber. Just kind of defrock it a little bit. And then we're going to use those individual petals to put some more color into this thing. I'm going to pull that little white piece off the base of the petal just because it's really not important. I don't want that as a part of the design. Um, I do love this color pink with the pulls the kind of the deep part of that orchid color out and be sure and can take into account some depth. So you see this petal is applied a little bit further forward, whereas this one is actually applied to that greenery that's in the back. So you've got a little more depth going on with it. That's kind of a nice element about it as well. I would like a little more of that wire to be seen. So I'm going to go back over what we've got there. So we're just going to take this, kind of pop it in there and do a little twisting and winding over the flowers. So we get a little bit of that bright, vibrant green. If you are a client and you're ordering pocket boutonnieres for your wedding, as you can see from this, it's a little more involved and there's a little more time and also product involved in this than there is with a traditional boutonniere. So expect for the cost to be higher. Um, it certainly will be as compared to using just a single rose or something. Now, just a little bit more of that green in there. Green Hypericum, nice sturdy stem on that. So I'm really going to just use that to kind of go right down in that stock. It's also going to be an element that helps hold that little wire in place too. You know, there's not really anything to say that these are specifically designed for men. Uh, we typically do think of boutonnieres for men, but in this application with these beautiful flowers and the volume of the flowers that you kind of generate with this, there's not anything wrong in the world with the fact that a woman could wear this. Um, if she were wearing a jacket for a formal occasion, it'd be beautiful. All right. I think that's it. I think I like how that looks. I like the balance of colors. Uh, let's pop it into the jacket and see how it looks. Yeah, that three by five size is a good size. It just slips right down into the jacket pocket and you just kind of snug it in there. It's a nice fit uh, right in the pocket. And because of that black ribbon, you don't see any of the cardboard uh, as a part of the mechanic. Works great. Um, Roy Prusak, if you're watching this, do you recognize that mannequin? Um, I'm just curious if you do. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, as you can see, they go together fairly quickly. Um, I always say that, and then Jason goes, this is one of your longest episodes. Um, fairly quickly, but they are a little more labor intense. It requires a little more time and um, subsequently some more expense. So, uh, but it's a great option for a traditional boutonniere. All right, today's pour 
is called Lost. And this is from a distillery that's in Fairfax, Virginia. Um, this particular uh, variety that we're using here is called Lost. It's from the Lost Whiskey Club, straight bourbon whiskey, heavy wheat. The mash bill on this one is 51% corn and 45% wheat. Um, in doing some research on the company, I found that they have these leather straps that are on the top of every bottle. It says Lost at the top. It also has the barrel number that it came from and then a story number. And so I couldn't quite figure that out. And as I was looking on their website, I saw that they consider bourbon as something that should be enjoyed. It's about the story. It's about sharing it with your friends. It's about putting away your phone. So I kind of like that. So uh, this is to help you always remember where and with whom you were when you shared this bottle. So kind of a cool concept. Um, beautiful caramel color, as you can see in the bottle on this. I'm thinking because this is heavy wheat that Jason and I are going to be a fan because it's a little bit sweeter. So we'll see. We'll see. Nice color. Look, there's glue on my hand from the boutonniere. Nice color. There's a little bit of sort of brown sugar. But that is nice. That is nice. A little fruit element like pear. Definitely the vanilla. I did note that um, on the website when they indicate the mash bill that there really is no statement of age as to how long this is, is aged in barrels. Um, they, I, I did read another review that said um, that as young as this is, it's definitely not harsh. And I would agree with that completely. It's, it's certainly not harsh. Yeah, the finish is nice and smooth. Um, Finishes a little mid-mouth for me, which is um, a, kind of my sweet spot for bourbons that I really enjoy. Lost from Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, give this one a try. I think you guys might like it. Well, that about concludes this episode. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you'll be notified. And until I see you again, cheers to you and to flowers every day. Take care.